What happens when Batman's son, Damian Wayne, and Superman's son, Jonathan Kent, go on a mission together? Robin and Superboy fight robots. We start with what seems like a very nice suburban home. They've got the works, tasteful decor, a big TV, and five family members gathered in the living room. Everything looks great. But something is odd with this picture. It's all too quiet. There's nothing on the TV. Most of the group is sitting in silence doing nothing. One of the brothers, Reggie, asks his sibling, Archie, for some of his popcorn. Archie wants to argue, but a simple cough from Reggie is enough to get Archie to hand over the entire bowl. The whole family is doing whatever Reggie wants, no questions asked. His mother gets him a blanket, his sister Sarah has to hand over a pillow, and his father will let Reggie drive the family car. It all feels oddly sinister. Reggie offers the others a group hug, but when they hesitate, the bratty redhead screams at them. As the family embraces, we see that this home is part of a film set. There are lights above, multiple cameras, and monitors to watch the playback. What is going on here? Whatever it is, it's enough to get Damian Wayne and Jonathan and Kent running for their lives through the forest, avoiding a ton of laser blasts. The two are angry at each other, neither wanting to take blame for what's going on. John yells that Damien lied to him. Damien says that he just didn't tell him everything. Totally different. But they can't keep running forever. The pair pause, with Damien turning to cover John's back. It's time for Robin and Superboy to fight back. And fight back against an army of robot copies of them. Okay, how the hell did we get here? Two days before, in Superman's family home of Hamilton County, we see a sleepy Jonathan Kent trudge out of the house on a cold, snowy day just in time for the school bus. And there's a new driver today, an old man with round glasses and a bushy white mustache. John takes a seat next to his friend Kathy, but before they can talk about her book report, he notices a problem. Two bullies are pelting Alan with spitballs. All he can do is beg the bullies to stop. John cannot just sit back and let it happen, so he gets up to tell the two idiots, Frank and Brian, to knock it off. They ask if John thinks he's Superman or something and make him their new target instead. The driver yells at the kids to stop, and John takes his seat. But that's just his morning. Once school lets out later in the day, John's confident. It's time for a snowball fight. Ready for some fun, he wants Alan and Olivia to join him. Unfortunately, Frank and Brian are still up to no good. They've gotten some friends together and already have plenty of ammo. They're down for all-out snow war with John and his friends. But during this, Frank and Brian start packing rocks into their snowballs and throwing them at the other kids as hard as they can. John's fast enough to dodge, but his friends are not so lucky. Alan's left with a bleeding head while Kathy's jacket protected her. After that, these future criminals wanted to put even bigger rocks in their snowballs. John's heat vision started to flare with anger as he slowly removed his glasses. They hurt his friends. He'd show them some pain they'd never forget. But no. John decides to resist the urge. He tries to coordinate his friends, telling them to protect their faces and get ready to counterattack. But just then, a gigantic mound of snow fell from the roof, covering all the bullies. Kathy wonders if they've got an angel on their side. John, looking up, sees a figure on the rooftop and wonders if it might be a devil instead. He takes a second to make sure his friends are okay before running off behind the building to investigate. Lurking behind the school building was the bus driver from before. John, seeming to know the guy, would question what he was up to. Apparently, he was bored and wanted to see how normal people live. Removing the disguise, Damian Wayne would reveal himself. Damian's been homeschooled his entire life. Damien even became John's substitute science teacher today. When John wonders how a 13-year-old could teach earth science to an entire class, Damien replied that he could have had a doctorate in geology at 7 years old. The only reason he didn't was because his mom killed his professor and dumped him in the ocean. <sighs> and you thought his dad was bad. John tries his best to smile through that, joking about Damien beginning to drive at 8. But Damien actually did that at 5, with a clear disregard for the rules. Damien takes John back home, driving the bus one last time before returning to Wayne Manor. He's still got training to get through. Once Batman started talking about heading out a bit early, Damien was excited to vault over Alfred's head to go get ready. Which Alfred was not so happy about. Unfortunately for Damien, Batman was not bringing him along. He blew off studying with Alfred to follow John and is behind on his homework. Damien saw it all as a waste of time since he already knew everything, but Batman was not satisfied. He promised his father he'd take studying seriously, so he was left to keep at it. Meanwhile, Jonathan Kent is playing poker with his parents. John's filling them in on what happened at school with the snowball fight. 
Lois and Clark are proud of him for standing up to the bullies and not using his powers to hurt people, assuring him that he's a hero even out of the costume. Lois easily wins the poker game, and Superman has to head off to help the Justice League. Still, he gives both Lois and John a kiss goodbye before heading off into the night sky. And that makes it bedtime for John. He turns in, laying down for a good night's sleep under the nice, calming moonlight. Hope you remembered to floss, Johnny boy. John almost blasts Damien with heat vision out of sheer surprise. Damien snarks that John must be a kid for heading to bed so early. The two boys traded insults, both insisting they could totally take down the other. But Lois hears them. John covers for Damien, grabbing his laptop and pretending to be shutting it down. Once he's done lying to his mother, John turns to the boy hiding outside his window, asking Damien what's going on. Robin wants to let him join in on an investigation in Metropolis. Someone's been breaking into Lex Luthor's labs. He wants to figure out what's happening, and he could use some backup. Instead of bedtime, it's time to be super. What could go wrong? Super Sons vs. Lex Luthor Damien swings while John leaps, since he hasn't started flying yet. When they get close to LexCorp Tower, Superboy offered to save them some time by carrying Robin on his back. But Robin wasn't interested. Apparently, he'd been doing this sort of thing long before Superboy put an S on his chest. John was really worried about them getting into trouble, and just like that, they were faced with their first problem. Lex Luthor himself in a flying battle suit. Meanwhile, back in the strange studio, that red-headed kid from before, Reggie, is playing an odd game of hide-and-seek with his family. He takes a second to think it through, sitting atop the coffee table while two identical duplicates of him start to walk through the room. The other members of Reggie's family all look terrified, trying to hold their breath as they hide. He calls out to each of them, one by one, all clearly afraid of this game. But they aren't able to hide well enough as Reggie confronts the rest of their family one by one. And each time, it gets brutal. He grabs his brother Archie by the neck, complaining that the bigger kid always thought he was better than Reggie. Then, it's his dad's turn. Reggie grabs an entire fridge like a club, yelling that the old man didn't think he measured up as a superhero. Reggie's dad tries to say that a device is messing with his head, but he doesn't get to finish. Sarah tries to keep calm as the psychotic kid slams his father's head into the floor. Then, it's his mother, who is cowering in fear and trying to reassure her son. But that doesn't save her from a brutal blow with an iron. Sarah has a hand over her eyes, trying desperately to hold back tears and not give herself away. All three different Reggies drag their slain family members together in the living room. Sarah makes a break for it, running out of the fake home into the rain, while Reggie boasts that she's not going to measure up to Kid Amazo. Over in Metropolis, John and Damien have to try and find a way to explain themselves to Lex Luthor. And John is already panicking. He's convinced he's going to be in trouble with his family over this. Damien, however, is not worried at all. He makes a joke about Lex being a billionaire who still can't seem to cure his baldness. Unbothered, he starts pulling up Damien's grapple line, ready to pull them off the building. Before he can, though, Damien grabs John's foot and tosses him towards the ground. Robin flashes Lex a grin, pointing out his problem. John can't fly. Lex isn't going to let him go that easily. He snaps the grapple line before zooming down, trying to rescue John. Thankfully for Damien, he's got a spare grapple gun to get a second line back to the rooftop. Lex desperately struggles to grab the squirming, terrified John. Lex tells the boy to go limp as he circles under him, ready to break his fall. Damien's made it to the rooftop, his break-in already underway. At the base of the tower, Lex tries to get some answers out of John. The young Superboy protests that he doesn't even want to be here. Before Lex can bring him into custody, John kicks him as hard as he can, escaping his grip and bolting into a nearby alleyway. Damien's over in the elevator shaft, diving towards a secret floor of the building that's not on public blueprints. Breaking in, there's a whole floor of confidential stuff to investigate. Damien knows he's only got 20 seconds until John or Luther show up, so he's gonna have to use them wisely. Back in the alleyway, John thinks he's finally gotten away from Lex, but that doesn't last long. Lex grabs him by the collar, holding him at a distance this time. John tries to come up with an excuse, telling Lex that this was all just a prank. But considering their physical abilities, Lex was not convinced. John spins a story about breaking out of an orphanage to meet Lex Luthor, the man who made himself Superman. Lex doesn't even blink. Then why is your friend currently planting explosives in my lab? John is honestly confused by that bit, but Lex's suit is so fast that they've reached Damien's location in no time. John still tries to play up the lie that they're just fans, but Damien isn't interested in maintaining that story. He quickly turned around, and Luther vaporized his bomb even faster. He'll give the two kids three seconds to explain why they're trying to blow up his private lab. Damien, with a smug grin, would respond that he'll give Lex five seconds. Lex asks what for. Meanwhile, John already has an idea of where this is going. 
Damien planted 11 other bombs before Lex was able to get back, and they're all on timers. Luther rushes to try and save his lab while Damien ducks away to join John. It's time for them to get out of here fast. His grapple gun is enough to get them out of the LexCorp elevator shaft. In no time, they're gliding over Metropolis before Damien lets John go. As far as the boy Wonder's concerned, this whole operation's been a great success. John is less excited, pointing out that they almost got into a ton of trouble because of this. Damien doesn't care, almost trouble is trouble that didn't happen. Robin starts tapping away at a tablet, giving Superboy a compliment. He makes a terrific distraction. Superboy's had enough. He was tired of being used and regrets ever training with Batman and Robin. But Damien doesn't care. He got what he came here for. John snarks that Lex caught him planting stuff immediately. That despite the ego, he wasn't even half as good as Batman. And Damien agreed. He's better. He just wanted LexCorp's security footage, and he got it all. John goes to get them snacks while Damien starts reviewing the footage. He's found the guy who broke into LexCorp earlier. It's Reggie, the kid we saw terrorizing his family earlier. The redhead sneaks into Lex's lab and does something to an android, and that makes the cameras go dead. Damien tosses the tablet to John, done with it for now. There are almost 200 hours of security footage on there, covering every camera in the building. It'll take Robin a week to go through everything on there, but he's determined to do it. Once he's got a handle on what the thief was after, he'll take it to Batman. Then Bruce will have to follow his lead. Damien's all set to drive back to Gotham on his Robin bike, but before he can leave, John found something. Damien did not see that coming. John's used his supervision to watch the footage several times faster and found Reggie breaking in many times. He's got footage of Reggie at four different parts of LexCorp at once, all at 9.30 a.m. Damien swipes the tablet, excited. John turns around, ready to go home. He does not want to spend a week on this job. He's got school and family to deal with. But before he can leave, Damien shoots his grapple into the wall behind him. Thanks to Batman's facial recognition systems, he already has a lead on Reggie. They can solve this. Superboy betrays Robin. The two are driving off towards Providence, Rhode Island, where Reggie's family, the Myers, live. Damien's zooming over the roads with his bike, John on the back with him. As they draw close to the city, Robin shuts down the light and power on his bike, drifting down a hill towards a building on the outskirts of the city. As they go, Damien explains what's going on to John. This kid and his whole family were affected by the Amazo virus. It was a superpower contagion that hit the DC Universe about a year ago. It gave people superpowers, even as it killed them. John's dad told him that everyone cured of Amazo lost their powers. According to Damien, Batman says that Superman is not much of a details person. In reality, 5% of all Amazo victims kept their superpowers. And that included all five Meyer family members. They got some attention in Providence as a new superhero team. But they disappeared. They've been missing for weeks. Damien's tracked Reggie to this location. Robin scans through the building for an opening. The walls are tough, so he's already launching a plan to break through the roof. But taking a jab at Damien for his details comment earlier, Superboy points to an open front door. The two Super Sons go in together, Damien flicking on his flashlight. It's the same weird studio we saw earlier. Spotlights, cameras, and everything. John's getting nervous, wanting to call their dads in. But Damien isn't willing to hand this case over to their dads or the Justice League. Batman already micromanages his training and involvement with the Teen Titans. He needs to do this his way. John starts searching, wondering if he's just here to save him if things get tough. Damien doesn't answer at first, reading over a newspaper, before claiming that he doesn't mess up. John does have one mistake to hold over him, though. Damien didn't invite John to join the Teen Titans. Damien snarks that he clearly doesn't understand what the word teen means, given that he's only 10, before getting back to his news article. Apparently, the family got into an argument on the street, one that escalated into a fight. They were known to be having difficulties even before they were infected with Amazo. But Superboy stopped listening as his eyes went wide with shock. He spotted the dead bodies of the Meyer family piled up under the fridge. John immediately starts crying. Damien tries to calm him down, admitting that this is horrible, but being convinced that they can figure it out. But no, this is John's breaking point. They need to go get the adults. Damien tries to hold him back, insisting that this is his case and solving it is his job. But John tosses him into the fake wall. He's not playing along with Damien any longer. He jumps through the roof, heading away, even as Damien screams at him to stop. It's the first time Robin's called John by his actual name. He's way too proud to admit it, but Damien really wanted John's help. But that one moment is not enough. Damien picks himself up slowly. He refuses to call off the investigation. John touches down in the nearby forest. He's still shaken up by the sight of so many dead bodies, feeling like he's gonna be sick. 
Still, his super senses notice someone hiding nearby. Sarah, Reggie's sister, the one survivor of the Myers. Back in the warehouse, Damien's comparing the photo from the paper to the corpses. There's five chairs, five family members, but three dead bodies. Include Reggie and you have four. It's clear someone's missing from this scene. But looming behind him are the two greatest superheroes of all time. Superman is ready to confront Robin while Batman is on Superboy's trail. And they do not look friendly. What is going on? Well, while you wait for more, check out our Top 10 Strongest Super Kids video.